Chapter 4 takes a look at civil liberties or the restraints of the actions of government against individuals. First 10 amendments of the U.S. Constitution, known as the Bill of Rights, set these restraints on the federal government. Most famous is the First Amendment, which provides for freedom of religion, speech, the press, and other rights. The framers of the Constitution created a brief document with broad guidelines in structuring the Bill of Light rights, knowing that courts would interpret it over time. Disagreements continue today over the meaning of its simple phrases such as freedom of religion or freedom of the press. The uh, Bill of Rights originally did not apply to state governments. Most states had their own Bill of Rights, meaning that people in different states essentially lived with different civil rights. In 1868, however, the 14th Amendment was ratified and constitutional protections of civil liberties began to be applied to state governments. But beginning in 1925, the Supreme Court began to apply specific rights depicted in the Bill of Rights to state government. That's known as the incorporation theory, but that's never really been fully accepted by the Supreme Court. And here are some of the, the uh, Bill of Rights that are incorporated into the 14th Amendment you can review on your own schedule. First Amendment addresses the issue of religion from two venues separation of church and state, and free exercise of religion. The first, separation of church and state. The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. This establishment cause prohibits the creation of a church officially supported by a national government. That's what creates a wall of separation between church and state. In 1971, in the Lemon v. Kurtzman case, the Supreme Court ruled that state aid could not be used to subsidize religious instruction and its three-part lemon test is often used to interpret these types of questions. The lemon test is uh, the, the three elements. One, the aid had to be secular in aim. Two, it could not have the primary effect of advancing or inhibiting religion. And three, the government of, must avoid an excessive excessive government entanglement with religion. The school voucher issue, another ongoing co controversy is whether school vouchers could be used for religious schools. Some states attempt that education reform involve granting student vouchers that can be used at any public or private school, including religious, religious schools. The court has ruled that this is permissible. Nonetheless, some state courts have held that vouchers violate state law. Another element of freedom religion of religion, the issue of school prayer. In 1962, court ruled in the Regents Prayer case, that's Engel versus Vitali, that officially sponsored prayer in school violates the establishment clause. And the debate over school prayer continues in 1985. Court ruled in Wallace that a minute of silent prayer in schools was unconstitutional. But lower courts have interpreted this to mean that a moment of silence is permitted when it has a secular rather than religious purpose. So you can have a moment of silence, but it can't be for a religious purpose. Continuing on with freedom of religion, 1968, court held in the Epperson case that no state law can ban the teaching of evolution because this imposes religious beliefs on students. Likewise, the teaching of intelligent design in public schools was strongly criticized by a federal court that ruled unconstitutional in 2005. For religious displays on public property, court has ruled that nativity scenes or the Ten Commandments are acceptable on public pro property if part of broader or secular displays. 2009 court ruled that a city in Utah was not required to accept and display a religious monument from a group. Now, the group based its argument on freedom of speech, not the Establishment Clause. Free Exercise Clause as it relates to freedom of religion. Congress is also prohibited from passing laws 
that deny people the right to practice their religious beliefs. That's the free exercise clause. Yet the Supreme Court has allowed for some restraint on specific religious practices that interfere with public policy. For instance, churches and other religious institutions have a tax exempt status, so they're not allowed to endorse candidates or make campaign contributions, though they can take positions on ballot initiatives. In practice, the IRS rarely bothers to respond, but, it, but um, even when it's faced with obvious endorsements. Another example is um, vaccination requirements, regardless of religious beliefs. Freedom of expression, first concept we'll talk about, no prior respect, restraint. The right to free speech, and to a free press are two of the most frequently invoked freedoms of Americans, the right to have our say and hear what others say. Censorship by restraining an activity before the activity has actually occurred is called prior restraint. Only on rare occasions has the government been allowed to stop the press from printing anything. If the publication violates a law, the law can be invoked only after publication. In New York Times versus the United States, the Pen also known as the Pentagon Papers case in 1971, court ruled in favor of the newspaper's right to publish information that the government wanted to be prohibited from being published. Symbolic speech, signs, gestures, articles of clothing, other types of nonverbal expressive content, conduct that convey meaning. That's symbolic speech. They're constitutionally protected by the courts. In Tinker versus Des Moines, the court held that wearing black armbands as a protest against the Vietnam War was a form of free speech. And what about the issue of flag burning? A controversial act of burning the American flag was ruled a form a free expression in Texas versus Johnson in 1989. Congress then passed the Flag Protection Act, which was then struck down as unconstitutional by the court. So burning of a flag, considered free expression, Congress's attempt to uh, pass a Flag Protection Act struck down as unconstitutional. Advertising statements are considered forms of commercial speech, which had no protection historically, but limited First Amendment protection began in the mid-1970s. Acceptable restrictions on commercial speech include uh, seeking to implement a substantial government interest, directly advances that interest, and goes no further than necessary. Very narrow, very narrow. There are permitted restrictions on expression. In 1919, the Supreme Court allowed restrictions on speech that allegedly would cause harm to the public. That is when a person's words present a clear and present danger to the police or public order. That created the clear and present danger test. Uh, the court has modified this rule over time. Uh, in 1925, the Gitlow case, the government received greater power to restrict speech through the courts enunciation of the bad tendency rule, marking the first time it invoked the First Amendment against the state government. And in 1969, Brandenburg versus Ohio, that established the incitement test. That allows restrictions on speech only when it is likely to incite or produce lawless action. And that, of course, is difficult for prosecutors to prove. Supreme Court also has grappled with the legal definition of obscenity or sexually offensive material. In 1973, it ruled in Miller v. California that material can be legally obscene if it violates a four-part test established by the court. Material is considered to be obscene if, one, the average person finds it violates community standards, two, the work of it as a whole appeals to a purient interest in sex, 
Three, the work shows patently offensive sexual conduct. And four, the work lacks serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific merit. The court also stated that the nature of purient interest would be determined by community standards. As a result, it's avoided defining obscenity and it's opened the way for widely differing interpretations of the Miller case. Uh, in, related to protecting children, in 1984, the Child Protection Act made it a crime to knowingly receive mail with sexually explicit, explicit depictions of children. In 1990, the court ruled in Osborne versus Ohio that states can ban private possession of child pornography. And in 2008, the court upheld a law that makes it a crime to offer child pornography, even if the pornography in question does not exist. That's the Williams case. Congress has made many attempts to shield minors from pornography on the Internet, but most have been ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. 1996 Communications Decency Act banned the online availability of any obscene or indecent messages to minors. It was struck down as unconstitutional infringement on free speech the following year because the terms indecent and patently offensive could refer to numerous materials that were not pornographic. Similarly, in 2004, the 1998 Child Online Protection Act was struck down by the court as violating free speech. The court has upheld, though, the 2000 Children's Internet Protection Act, which requires that public schools and libraries install filtering software to prevent children from viewing adult content because the filters can be removed by adult request. Another form of unprotected speech um, a defamation of character that involves wrongfully hurting someone's reputation with false statements. Slander involves the public uttering of oral statements that are false and intended to defame the character of another. Libel involves such statements in writing. So slander, verbal, libel is writing. Court rulings on on student speech have often been based on the level of schooling involved with the least rights for elementary students and the most rights for college students. Uh, high schools can impose restrictions on speech that would not be allowed in college settings. This was upheld by the court in a controversial 2007 decision regarding an Alaska high school student. The student posted a sign it said bong hits for Jesus on private property across from the, the school. And uh, it was felt that that was, uh, that was promoting drug use that gave the school officials power over student speech. Another example, college student activity fees. Colleges may distribute these activity fees among student groups, even when the groups espouse beliefs that some students would reject. In 2000, the court favored a Wisconsin university's right to require such fees, even if they were used to support social and political causes, such as uh, gay rights, with which some students disagreed.